Oscar Peterson with his own Paganini variation giving our signature tune a real seeing to. As well as being one of the world's greatest jazz pianists, Oscar Peterson's also a composer. He's written music for films, he's written music for a ballet, City Lights. His most successful piece was probably the Canadiana Suite for Jazz Trio, which drew its inspiration from his native Canada. For this Good Friday, Alan Benson last year approached Oscar Peterson to see if he'd do something specially for us on the Easter story. We're delighted to say he agreed, and it'll get its world premiere tonight in the second half of the programme. With Oscar Peterson and Niels Pedersen on bass, and Martin Drew on drums. Was one of the reasons why you so readily accepted because you liked the idea of doing something on this particular theme? I'd say no to that for the simple reason that when Alan first approached me about it, I had a lot of trepidation about it. I, I, uh, from, um, I guess from a thought standpoint, not from a musical standpoint, from a subject matter standpoint, I, the first thing that hit me was why would anyone want to write in a jazz vein for such an unfortunate incident? <laughs> Uh, and I had sort of a mental block about it at first. Was it the jazz that bothered you? Because it's been written about in rock, it's mm -hmm. been satirized, it's been mocked, it's been made great play of and made a mess of in many occasions mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. Was it the jazz that bothered you, or your own personal view of, the, of the, that Easter story? Well, usually when I compose something, now when I think about the, the way that a, uh, the particular suite will work, how it will expand and contract, how it will reach high points, and be subtle at times. And because the subject matter was so sad and, and unfortunate, I really couldn't see at first how I was going to handle certainly the crucifixion. You can't really do a, an out and out jazz tune to that. And then when I started thinking about it, I realized that I could move into that and move, and it ended happily, of course, with the uh, rising of Christ. And I decided then that I could do it. Did you draw on any of your own? Um religious background when you were writing this. Did you have a religious background which is musical as well as uh, to do with your faith? Yes, I did. I had, uh, I, I had a religious background and I sang in the church choir like most youngsters my age. And uh, I played for all the church, not all, but many of the church concerts. What sort of things did you play? Very classical music. <laughs> very, very classical music. You know, I, I did things like... Um, as close as I came to jazz, doing some of the Negro sp spirituals. However, I've always been an admirer, uh, incidentally, of the, um, the religious approach to music, harmonically. Uh, whenever I've taught piano, I've always advocated that they use four notes in the voicings to move them around. I always feel that if you can do it in four notes, then it can work with more notes. And things like... Uh, tell my students to move the inner voices and give it more impact and so looking at uh, religious music you'll find a lot of four note harmonies and I think that's a challenge to write to that and sometimes it's a better way to write I think. You've divided the suite into nine movements can you tell us which parts of the story you chose and uh, give us some idea of the outline? Well first of all the trial it's, it's pretty hard to depict the lawyers <laughs> But on the trial, which is a very heavy moment in the story, I used Martin Drew's talents and uh, decided this was, would be sort of a dramatic way of depicting someone on trial using almost a, a militaristic approach. Uh, Can you give us a sample give, of how yes. work out? I asked Martin to give us a drum intro, and this is what, he, this is what I followed it with. Three, four... <laughs> sort of a somber theme and by using the militaristic type drums behind it I think it's very easy to visualize the soldiers with the helmets and the spears and what have you marching Jesus to court for the trial. You saw it all in pictures in the pictures that we all have received through painters and uh, yes. through the words mm -hmm. of the, that's the way I you think pictorially when thought. I write uh, many times um, the the last selection in the suite he is risen is a very happy tune done in a spiritual way um, so that it denotes happiness that Jesus has survived.
It's a very sort of easy follow melody. Did you listen to any of the great uh, cl cl other classical tradition pieces which have been written about Easter? No, I tried not to. Actually, I looked at the story and tried to formulate a line, a procedural line within my mind, and said, well, I'm going to have to go from this to this. For instance, in one of the parts, one of the stories where, and part of the story where uh, Jesus is finally marched down to the cross, um, and he asks, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? I asked Niels to depict the passing of Jesus on the cross by ending up on a very low end of his base and just stopping. And that's where that particular piece stops to denote the passing of Christ on the cross. Can you tell us a bit, Niels, uh, first of all, what you do there, what you contribute, and how you work in with Oscar on that? Well, it's uh, like a cadenza, I would say. I'm not really trying to describe anything as such, but uh, it's... Uh, I tried to play it in minor, let's put it like that. I can give you an example. Yeah. It is kind of sad. Yeah. And also, Niels is a type of basses that uses vibrato, which many basses don't. They use very dead sound. But with the vibrato, it, it's sort of a lyrical, uh, sad type way of playing a melody or a line that will, would depict that scene more easily. We've uh, talked about the trial a little bit, but Martin comes in very strongly in the denial as well. Could you, Martin, could you tell us uh, what you're doing there? Well, I'm on, Oscar plays a figure, and I answer it with the symbols. This is the figure that he answers. And it's almost supposed to be someone saying, you did so-and-so, and the other person says, one says, I didn't do it. The other person says, yes, yes, you did. And it's a... It's a foray back and forth between Martin and myself. Do you have the shows what you do in Are You King of the Jews? That's supposed to be a mocking. Well, in other words, to... it's a continuing thing in the Jesus is marked, they're marching Jesus off yeah. and people are shouting at him and, could, you know, um, shouting insults and so forth. And then what Niels is doing, he's perpetuating the, the movement throughout it and I'm playing this. Are you in that sense answering each other then as well? Like yes. You're taking, yeah, the, you're you taking the two. Yeah, I'm yeah. making the first statement and he's answering me in this case. Ah, could we say that then? You make the first statement. <laughs> That's the question there. Are you really king of the Jews? That's, and then we, then we integrate it into a minor blues thing that we play on later on. And does Martin come in on that too? Yes, Martin's in it too. Yes. One, two, three. <laughs> and we've had this uh, rap, really, between the uh, trial and the right. night, and a bit of blues. You also use a, a waltz, don't you? And Jesus yes. Christ Lies Here Tonight, you use yeah. a jazz waltz. Why did you want to use a waltz for the first, in the first instance? I think a waltz is a very placid rhythmic form that can be used uh, very um, sensitively. But this is about Jesus after the crucifixion. Yes, where they have laid him to rest. And have laid him, that's right. Yeah. And the, the, actually, in the classical form, it's played like this. Well, if you play it in a slow waltz, it comes out with the same sort of feeling, and it isn't abrasive if we do it this way. One, two, three. So you get the same feeling but there is a, a cushion, if you will, of rhythmic time quietly moving along underneath it. You're taking all of that. Uh, are you just coming in there, Nils, or are you, what are you contributing to that there? Well, uh, I'm making the soft cushion, I would say, <laughs> under the, that particular part of music. You also have a classical movement. Uh, it's Why Hast Thou Forsaken Me, that passage. Mm. Could you tell us why you wanted to do that in a classical way and what you were doing in that, in that, uh, in that section of the suite? There, I don't think there's any really specific, real specific reason for that, uh, Melvin, other than the fact that uh, musical form. I got in, became intrigued with this figure. Which is the 
question, why hast thou forsaken me? Then I enlarged it. out actually into the full trio that way, yeah. but it starts really as a classical, a simplistic classical melody. What do you, uh, Niels, what are you doing in that? Because it does start very classical, and then you're opening out. Are you waiting for it to open out? You're going to take yeah. it into a different mode? I think you? we're making yeah. it open up. I mean, I play answers to what you play in the yeah. first chorus, I would say. But are you slightly switching the form by opening up into I think, it? Yeah, I think we bring it into uh, a more classical ballad, I mean jazz ballad form, after being very classical. What do you feel about coming in on this classical part, Martin? Well, it's just uh, embellishing the form that Oscar has set, just putting a very delicate rhythmic thing as opposed to getting too heavy and where the crescendo builds up, building it up with a cymbal. Yeah. But without making it too much of it. Have both of you enjoyed the different challenges in these nine movements? I mean, it's, it's very varied, isn't it? Well, what I do you haven't made up it? my mind yet. <laughs> 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 it is very demanding, I must say. Martin, really? Oh, yes. Yes, once, when, it, when it comes together, it's great. <laughs> what mood have you tried to create at the very beginning of the work, the Last Supper and the Garden of Gethsemane? What, that's where you're setting it up. What, what are you going for? There? I made a very, I tried to make a very uh, definitive statement uh, leading into the, from the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane because the garden is a very light theme which Niels plays. But this part actually starts the suite. same kind of sort of uh, theological voicing, you know. With a few modern chords. Yeah. And so you're just, you, what, what actually are you setting up there? You're setting a mood of... Uh, a slight mood of mystery. It's slightly somber, isn't it? It is it's somber. It's also modern and classical, and a slight touch of spiritual mm -hmm. in that. Right. So you're setting all the themes in those. Well, the supper, you know, to denote a, su uh, denote a, a supper uh, with Jesus and the disciples, uh, I think it should be a somber thing because it was the last supper. And from there, we, as I say, we then, I set up so that with this phrase to bring the trio in to the garden sequence. Mm -hmm. Really, because of musical pacing, I had played the first part, the first, uh, the last mm. supper part, and also after that, when the bridge comes in, I wanted more of a, a tempo feeling, and I so consequently, consequently, I set that with Niels to let him play the uh, solo, and then I come in on the bridge with a more of a pr pronounced four feel. Well, thanks very much. We're very pleased with it, are you? I'm kind of happy with it. I think it worked.